Will the Australian dollar rise or fall? Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I've got my stein of coffee that I'm working through and I thought we'd have a look at this article from Yahoo Finance discussing two predictions about the Australian dollar and whether it will rise or fall at the end of the year. Now, before we jump into this article, let's have a look at a few little things. The first is here. Well, this is just the Australian dollar. The last few months, we can see we were, you know, we finished the year at about 69 US cents. And then we steadily plummeted all the way down. What was the low point to 58 cents roundabout? Then it's climbed right back up now. We were over 70 recently to now we are at 69 cents once again exactly we're sitting at uh, hang on 4x australian us 69 238 at the time of recording this now the australian dollar one thing i've learned by doing these videos and just looking from the comments we are in some ways treated as a proxy for the chinese economy and i'm just logging into the observatory of economic complexity because it's a great way to demonstrate the relationship between australia and china our economic relationship you can see here what I constantly harp on about is the lack of economic complexity of our nation. We're not producing many complex or advanced exports. We're producing quite primitive exports. And if we can see here, you can see coal is one of our biggest exports, 57 billion, then iron ore, 48 billion, and then gold is 16.1 billion. Now our biggest destination for our exports, the biggest demand for our goods is from China at 35%. So some people will argue that the Australian dollar is a proxy for the, well, the performance of the Chinese economy. The performance of the Chinese economy, because they'll be demanding our coal, our iron or our gold, all of our resources. Another advantage we have, well, is for a high dollar, is that while our exports will be more expensive, our imports, which are all of these things, and a big chunk of them comes from China and the US, will become cheaper will become cheaper. Do you all remember when the Aussie dollar was at one, over a dollar US? I think we did a we signed up for a Kickstarter for a laser a laser cutter and we ended up pulling out. So we got into it when it was like a dollar over a dollar US and then we ended up getting out because they were just too delayed. And I'm actually glad we pulled out because it sounds like a very noisy machine. I probably couldn't even use it. And we made a profit. <laughs> we made a profit on the exchange rates. So there you go, there's my dollar trading experience. So let's have a look at this article. The Australian dollar forecasts show a split over the V-shaped recovery. And I, I, the reason I wanted to look at this was, well, is this the V-shaped recovery they're talking about right here? Can we see it's shooting up? Or just the, well, the fact that we've got two completely different arguments about the same thing. For an, an idea of how disparate predictions are for the world post-pandemic rebound, look no further than forecast forecast for Australia's dollar. Bulls such as Morgan Stanley see the currency rising to 73 US cents by year end as the worst of the pandemic eases. At the under, other end of the spectrum, JP Morgan, Chase and Co and Rabobank say it will tumble to the low 60s, level due to slowing global growth amid a second wave of infections from US China and US China tensions. What do you think, everyone? What are your predictions of where the Australian dollar will sit by the end of the year? The Aussie's fortunes have waned since it rebound from, rebounded from a 17-year low as a new surge in virus cases threatens to upset the global rebound narrative. Further gains for the currency are contingent on firmer commodity prices and a recovery in Chinese demand, ref reflecting the, the tenuous outlook for the world economy. See, I mean, that's the thing. That's where, where I'm saying many people see us as a proxy for the Chinese economy. Because we are. <laughs> We're pretty much in bed with them. We're pretty much in bed with them. And yet now there's, there's discussions of essentially a cold war manifesting. The biggest factor driving the risk-sensitive Aussie will be the performance of the global economy, says Ben Jarmain, senior economist at JP Morgan, who sees the currency dropping to 64 US cents by year end particularly its ability to vindicate the rapid recovery in risk assets. I mean, here's the thing. 
what do you think? Do you think JP Morgan, 64 cents? Do you think we'll head back down there? Among the optimists, Morgan Stanley's David Adams is confident that Aussie will enjoy front-loaded gains as Australia's growth outpaces that of developed market peers. Well, that's the comparison thing. If, if we are still doing bad, but other people are doing worse than us on a global level, we'll be more attractive. So people will want to park their savings or their money in Australia. Could that be what it is? You know, maybe our property only falls 30% while it falls 40% in other countries. <laughs> The nation's expansionary fiscal policy also helps, as well as the Reserve Bank of Australia policy, which is less dovish, dovish than global peers, according to a June 19th report. The currency of the iron ore and natural gas exporter was trading near 69 cents on Thursday. Central Bank Governor Philip Lowe has done little to damp the enthusiasm, noting last week that it's really hard to argue that Aussie, the Aussie was overvalued. We see further upside through to the end of the year, with the Aussie comfortably rising above 72 cents in, mo in the most likely scenario of a swoosh-shaped global growth recovery, said uh, Ranko Birch, head of market analysts at Monex Europe Limited in London. Still, the currency's rise won't be smooth, especially if any of the major economies reimpose a lockdown, he said. So trade risk. Some point out that Australia's economic fortunes depend on China. And given Beijing's dispute with Washington over the outbreak, uncertainties abound. Case in point, the Aussie slid almost 1% when there was a brief bout of confusion over the fate of the US-China trade deal last Tuesday. Such swings may recur, and Canberra's request for an inquiry into the pandemic origins adds to the risks, according to to Rabobank strategist Jane Foley, who expects the Aussie to end the year at 62 cents. See, such a difference in the forecasts. And then there's a renewed spike in Australian infections. The state of Victoria has imposed a four-week lockdown across parts of Melbourne to try to contain the spread of the virus. For their part, asset managers have dialed back their bearish convictions. Short positions, which have been in place since October 2017, fell to the least uh, to the least in more than two years in the week ending June 23, according to the data from the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. Going forward, you will have periods of risk on and risk off that will impact the Aussie, said Adam Kibble, investment specialist at Inside Investment, predicting the Aussie will end the year at 70 cents. And in those periods of risk off, there'll be an opportunity to, need to increase your hedging levels and reduce your foreign currency exposure. So there you go. There you go. So we've got a few predictions. Adam Kibble suspects we'll be at 70% at the end of the year, pretty much where we're at now. Not much movement. We've got you know, Raybo Bank saying we will be at 62%. US cents at the end of the year. Back down to this level where we were in April and March or this year. Then we have 72 cents. 72 cents. Which from Euro Europe Limited in London will put us when were we last at 72 cents? Oh, we'll have to go. Let's go five years out and update this chart. Round about here, everyone, in Feb of 2019. So we haven't been at 72 cents in quite some time. So we're getting a few different predictions. Where do you think the dollar will head? Do you think it'll go up? Do you think it'll go down? Do you think it will say the same? Are you taking any moves to position yourself in case of these changes? Are you a fan of the dollar milkshake theory? Are you stocking up on US dollars? While well, you can. Do you think the Australian dollar will take a hit? Do you think China will pump out that stimulus and drive up demand for Australian resources and affect our dollar? Or do you think the new global contentions and conflict may impact that? As always, please let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Please like, 
share and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and want to support us, there are a few ways you can. You can join the channel on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us via our affiliate links at Amazon or eBay or independent reserve and KuCoin. You can buy our merch from Heiser Says. You can support us using Gold Pass from the Perth Mint or via PayPal. Thanks everyone. I'll see you next time.